we are going to catch up with our friends from Korea with the recent continuation of the train bus in Mythology Peninsula if you like crying while watching zombies eat people. Subscribe to the channel, let's get to it. We open in a manner not unlike an episode of The Walking Dead, panning across corpses strewn about a zombie wasteland with a group of hopeful survivors we don't know. Heading to an unknown destination this is we see a framework set up to reveal to us the harsh reality of this strange new world that they've been forced to so quickly settle into. Thankfully, the news is still running, informing us the safe, nurturing bosom of Bussum was only maintained for about a day before everyone was forced to evacuate, which is why our survivors are boarding a ship to Japan. Unfortunately, they learn midroute that they've been redirected to Hong Kong. Young Suk looks for a commanding officer for answers, and shortly after, we see that things are about to go tits up below deck as a copyary zombie reaches his final form and finds himself. Feeling a bit peckish news of the infected quickly spreads in the Passengers clear out Young Sack heads down to see about his family and finds a veritable orgy of twitching and writhing. Future zombies, including unfortunately his nephew, unable to pull his sister out of there. Quickly enough he's forced to lock down. Saddened by this turn of events he and his bro-in-law Shulman hug it out then through additional news anchor twattery we learned these ships were refused harbor everywhere they tried to dock and ended up roaming the open ocean for four years and then in some manner that remains unexplained they docked or some of the occupants managed to escape somehow at any rate a roving gang of street tufts wake up young suck who doesn't take kindly to folks interfering with his dreams it's time for a chit chat with the boss so they led him along when he arrives showman is already there along with a couple other nerd wells we learned Learn here that scavengers and criminals have been visiting the Korean Peninsula in an attempt to access all that and guarded money and gold. They had a team with a truck full of riches headed to the port, but it went missing somewhere around the Olmec Bridge. Their task, if they choose to accept it, is to drop in there and bring it back so they can split their half of the $20 million bounty. A perfectly simple plan, which is exactly why the first team is back home and safe. Right now, we learn it that their motivation to do this revolves around both the torment of of their prior decisions and their current second-class ghostly status those who made it ashore have no citizenship and are considered cast-offs unable to become legitimate members of society thinking the money will assist in finding a more permanent existence shulman is determined to take the job dragging him suck into it for the sake of ensuring his protection thanks to the boss's connections and bribery skills they soon find themselves gliding into dangerous waters after a brief ice-breaking exercise while gearing up we see the team of for paddling through the detritus toward the city when they make landfall they waste no time in finding a functional vehicle and are soon cruising through the ruins of the city careful to navigate in total darkness a weakness of the zombies as they approach the approximate area they get out to check the license plate of any truck they run across the first one isn't it and in checking on a slight noise nearby young suck stumbles across a zombie Turyama that hasn't really been cared or in the way that it should they continue like this spot in trucks and check tags while are remaining quiet and dark and they soon find the truck they were looking for they take a moment to verify the cargo is still intact before heading to the cab here they do a very sloppy job of removing the driver basically presenting him with a veritable smorgasbord and then leaning on the horn alerting everyone in the area as a roving band of zombies closes in on them young suck lays down some cover for his crew taking out a handful of zombies and also using light and sound distractions to pull large numbers off of them after a couple of close calls they make it out and celebrate by spending their newfound wealth in their minds as surely nothing could go wrong at this point but then it wrote commando prairie dogs nearby and starts firing off players in their general direction the life from which attracts any nearby zombies this causes the crew to attempt to rush through the crowd resulting in a wreck that throws young suck safely clear the scene an advantage of course of not wearing a safety belt he arms himself as shalman scrambles to the safety of the truck after a brief struggle he's saved from being overtaken by a couple of child drifters who drive their sports youth through the back alleys and side roads like a well-loved Mario Kart track. Juni eventually comes to rest in a tunnel where the way is blocked by a dense crowd of zombies. Alain using to demonstrate her expertise she activates her bedazzled Rex. Stunner to distract them and then the herd out a bit allowing them to continue on their way. Back in the truck we see a larger scale version of this tactic being used to clear out the horde of renegades 
the game platoon, then rolls up and Sergeant Hoang takes a moment to demonstrate for us and his men what they think of the newly infected and then they head back to their base with the truck. The girls soon get back to their base and we find them under the care of a lovable old coot who thinks he's still in the ward has delusions of rescue. Their mother Min Yang also lives there and we see via flashback that she was the woman Yum Suk left on the side of the road. They pressed him to admit whether he's a member of Unit 631 but are surprised to hear him claim to be from Hong Kong. Meanwhile the platoon returns to base where we find a structured and organized apocalyptic society of sorts that is I'm sure not under the control of military authoritarians as Sergeant Hoang Badgers and Administrator about getting his men some tuna rations. Shulman makes a noise that leads to his discovery in the back. He's then immediately taken to the arena but for some reason he doesn't seem to be drawing any positive energy from the group's jovial nature the ration master reports the commander so to let him know about the bounty brought in by Huang. A truck full of useless money this peak Sue's interest however because someone attempting to retrieve it implies some manner of egress from the peninsula which he's been dreaming of for some time. Meanwhile in the arena Shulman realizes he lost his satellite phone on the truck and so is unable to buy his freedom. Instead they strip him down and compliment his lithe and supple body before giving him an official number and dumping him into a storage container already filled with topless men. As they prepare for the game so gets his first contact with the outside world. Finding that it's still run by the transfer of capital they offer him the same terms as the other group and really he's just happy for the opportunity to leave. At the arena the men are then ushered onto the wet field of battle and we witness the nature of sport this new world as a grumble of zombies emerged from the adjacent locker room. Many of the men just resigned themselves to being eaten but those who make it to the end of the timer receive the privilege of being allowed to retreat to their container to take a breather and enjoy some and cook it. Raymond elsewhere Gene Sack is making plans to go to the unit 631 base to retrieve his goods. Although it's recommended that they move out after nightfall for safety, the plan is to secure their ticket out and then head to the port so they can escape together. Grandpa under the delusion that he's in contact with friendly forces is tricked into leaving his post under the insinuation that his liaison major Jane will be at the port and wants him to go along. Then they hunker down to get some rest. Back at 631 the conspirators work to develop a plan that may allow them to get out of the base with the truck while avoiding the suspicion of Wang. They work on this into the night so that when we transition back over to our protagonists we find them making their final preparations. Desiring to die with a clear conscience. Yung Sung comes clear to Mind Jung. Admitting that he was the one who left her on the side of the road that one time she then confides that she didn't remember him because 31 other vehicles in total drove by without helping them she has concluded from this that human nature is generally shitty and has learned to get over it they park a few blocks away from the facility and provide strict instructions to the kids to stay in the car and leave without them if they're not backed by first light then they begin their infiltration sneaking in through an emergency exit men June learned about when she used to live on base and then they work their way in meanwhile so announces in celebration of the food truck Huang's group brought back everyone gets extra rations and they'll have a 24 hour marathon of violence at the arena so everyone should stay there and not worry about checking on him later. Thinking he's covered his escape sufficiently so returns to his office. Where he's surprised to find Huang. Already present he's to daft for all. That wants to know why so. Normally a high strong tight wad is. Suddenly so. Quick to shower them in freebies he does. Enjoy his Johnny Walker black like he's. Getting a blowy butt is undeterred and. Pressing so about his generosity when. Kim then arrives the whole thing. Nearly goes sideways until Wang draws. The conclusion that the two men are an item and decides to leave them to their corporeal pleasures. Back at the truck the two interested parties converge at the same time and find they have congruent interests. In the process of sorting this out they learn that Shalman is still alive and involved in the games. So Min Jun gives Yung Sak a bit of time to attempt to retrieve him. So arrives shortly after the end result is gunfire that attracts the attention of a zombie horde outside and nearly distracts the men from their games but then Jun Sak shows up right
right in the middle of it all and he manages to slip out with Shulman under the cover of smoke grenades in the flare induced distraction but the combination of gunfire and zombie threat results in them finding themselves pinned down in the hallway after helping to neutralize some chaps Shulman takes a shot to the back this unfortunate turn of events fortunately turns young suck into the winter soldier as he cuts through his enemies with ease until finally being saved from another potential cheap back shot by Min Young. Busting in with the truck, they then gassed out of there as Huang and his men are forced to deal with the zombie horde, and so just patiently waits in a nearby vehicle. The van almost immediately gets jammed up when a pile of bodies crams the axle. Thankfully, the girls anticipated the trouble and arrive to help with the distraction. After they drive around a corner and redirect the horde with a Roman candle, the family takes a momentarily peaceful cruise before the soldiers catch up with them. We then get to enjoy a drawn out chase sequence in which the vehicles exhibit matchbox physics. Jui basically establishes herself as baby driver. The new brake is the initiator of every car stunt imaginable. And any vehicle can basically do anything you'd like as long as you get them going fast enough. It's also fun to imagine the actors twerking like crazy on these steering wheels while sitting in their little green boxes. After managing most of the crew, Jong Sen has an idea to finish them off. As he instructs Min Young to drive by the Tarima from earlier and puts a line of bullets through the glass. This leaves Sergeant Huang in an unenviable position from which his driver is unable to back the up as they coast to the finish line. Danger behind them so demonstrates how sometimes the danger comes from the side. They have a standoff during which he explains his plan to make it back to the mainland and just imagine that none of this ever happened. So right now, anything goes Yuzhen then attempts to create a distraction to save her sister, which works but then results in Grandpa and Minjin both taking rounds. So then makes it to the finish line in the truck but soon learns the merry band of thieves had no intention of ever sharing their bounty. As he he prepares to die and the sun begins to rise he manages to gas it backward out of the hatch which allows the zombie or to freely enter the ship and treat it like a giant can of tuna as the others bid farewell to crazy grandpa helicopter arrives they get its attention with fireworks then run to the landing site since she took a round to the leg min june can't do much other than fire directly at their backs and then hop into a truck to attract the attention of the zombies even though we previously saw grandpa talking to no one on the radio we discovered this helicopter to belong to the benevolent forces of the un and is under the command of major jane grandpa's imaginary pen pal juni thanks her by stealing her gun and attempts to force her to risk everyone else's lives by going back to save her mother who the girls seem to sense is on the verge of in her own brain pan but then she made a very sensible decision a simple remark tickles the ball sack of young socks memory motivating him to put in the necessary effort to get the job done this time he goes up to meet her and shoots at her face to scare her into running faster than they have a slow motion reunion in the midst of a fast zombie attack and eventually make it back to the safety of the helicopter the cost of only about five or so in soldiers then they all fly off into the sun i have a website set up where you can support channel through donations or merch i'd like to take a moment to give a huge thanks to my donors memorialized in the hall of headshots music peninsula was good but for me it didn't have the same emotional impact as its predecessor trained to Bussin. It does appear that there was also a TV series based in this zombie apocalypse universe so maybe some of the backstory is lost in the film. Overall it was a bit too much of an action movie and it had so many subplots. It was hard to allow the characters to have their individual moments of development to build up to the same kind of ending they achieved in Train to Bussin. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more video like this then please like, share and subscribe.